Shalom, beloved brothers and sisters, Jews and Gentiles alike. Welcome. This is your humble servant, Big Levi. Today is Levana, May 8, 2023, and it's currently 5.27 a.m. Eastern Time, pre-recorded. Beloved, I uh, come to you today to bring those news that's been happening around the world but uh, before i begin before we get into this i would like to give a disclaimer one uh, you might hear a lot of background noise i have a very powerful microphone and this new laptop that the nation had gifted unto us we started to use it now so things might be a little bit uh, too close too loud this is just a trial and error so then again you already know it when it comes to recording these things unless i listen to it afterward i would not know how it sounds so forgive me if you hear a car passing by and the humming noise of the ceiling fan or the ac thank you for your understanding secondly beloved what you're going to experience here it's quite graphic and when i say graphic in the term of violence and uh, inflammatory graphic so to speak because we had warned the nation once pluto get into aquarius things going to ramp up rapidly and that's exactly what we are seeing now is that thing recording because we got a new computer let me see is it is it yes yes it's recording now with that being said beloved we had to remind the nation uh, especially the children of the light the israelites that this is not jacob's trouble we will never have another jacob's trouble okay jacob's trouble began ever since jacob was born man the man being in trouble okay to say the least jacob's trouble began over there in the third part with the inquisition and then it transfer here 1492 and slavery chattel slavery jim Corism, uh, all the drugs wars till now you know those were jacob's trouble we're not going to go into these things again we had repented and everything is good be at peace now because there is no more well there will be no more jacob's trouble and there is none who is in trouble his brother esau and his descendant his companion so made it three what you are going to see here is worldwide this is not just only in the u.s that is why i will not begin with what happened over there in texas a few weeks well, a week ago since you are going to watch this most likely this uh shabbatai coming up which is going to be the 13th so this had happened last shabbatai uh, the 6th as you can see every shabbatite so to speak every saturday something horrible always happened because of course shabbatite is the day of the black george is the day of the grim reaper some of you saw the video where doing the quote-unquote mr king charles a coronation and there was a, a a figure that looked like a grim reaper walk right by in the background you know people are saying this people are saying that it was staged and all that no it was real and it's the black judge it's a sign that said your kingdom is going down and we are going to take you down now beloved if you remember a few months ago i would say then january 21st to be exact and the new moon we had an incident over there in california where a gentleman he was a so-called Moabite, so to speak. He went into a mushroom farm and blasted a bunch of people. Now, that was after that. But previous that, previously, before that, we had another fellow, another Moabite, so to speak, went into a dance, a music dance, a studio dance, a, stu a studio dance. And then he blasted a bunch of people, which was, again, on Shabbatai. Now, I have to tell the nation, Shabbatai or Saturday or the planet Saturn is nothing to play with. This is the highest planet, the heaviest planet, the comic planet, so to speak. Now, beloved, with all these disclaimers, okay, this is not a video to show hate, <coughs> excuse me, to show hatred, 
uh, to promote anger, to promote hate speech, to promote uh, violence. This is a video to let the nation, Jews and Gentiles alike, to come in peace and watch the reality of the things that are going out there, which is Esau's trouble, which is the revenge and the judgment of the mighty one. Let us watch. There you go. All right. This is teenage boy fatally shoots fellow student at Serbian high school. Well, Serbian school. This happened, I would say, three or four days ago. It happened in Serbia. And, uh, oh boy, I don't want to bring that in, but uh, some of you are uh, experienced enough. Oh, boy. Ah, of course, those are the birds. Uh, some of you are experienced enough to remember the Serbian film or a Serbian film. <laughs> Terrible. All right, let us watch. So what you're seeing here, that's the teenager that, you know, he's taken in custody. This is not just happening in America only, okay? This is in Serbia, that's in Europe, all right? Okay, that's the dead body right there. All right. So that was a school MS. That was a school MS over there. So. All right. This is the grieving. Okay. This is the grieving. Of course, this is plague number one. Is that what that is? And uh, yes, sorrow. Okay. This is the sorrow uh, from plague number one right here. All right. So, this is what you see here. This is a terrible thing, beloved, okay? This is, we are not making fun or saying, oh, this and that, but, hey, look at you and look at me. We warn you people, this thing going to happen, it's going to happen more and more, more frequent. You are going to hear one MS happen every single day. It's, ha it's happening every week, every two, three days. You are going to hear them happen every single day, nonstop. And guess what? You yourself with witness one. It's not going to stop because that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. It's the judgment. What you are looking at through your screen right now, it's the grief of the other nation. Alright, so you can see this. This is not something any family want to go through because we went through the exact same thing. Alright, and then when we tell those people that, hey man, you, you guys are the one that caused this. You are the one. Uh, of course, let's just stop right here. Let's take a look at this fellow. Um, let me just. Uh, oh. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, oops. All right, there you go. That's even better. Uh, look at this uh, guy shirt and on his sweater and his hoodie sweater, you can see these two numbers right here. Then again, people think we are making things like that up. People think like we are somewhat paying, I don't know, Fox News or NBC, MSNBC or whatever news station is that paid us. Or we kind of stage this. No, that's not what that is, man. And this gentleman shirt, his hoodie sweatshirt, you can see the number five and the other number four. Fifty-four. Five plus four equal. You do your thing. And number nine is the number of judgment. The universal lock number. You can't get out of number nine. Number nine cannot, you can't get out of number nine. And we have a video uh, that will come out in June, okay, that we're working on number nine. Okay, it seems like those look like it's, that's, that's, that's the parents of the kid. All right. Okay, so that's the parents coming and take their children, you know. 
because you sent your kids to school, you know, thinking that they're going to come home normally and you think like everything's going to be good and then this happened, all right? This is in Serbia, all right? Serbia. Uh, let me see if we can get uh, this country, Serbia. Google Earth. Uh, let's, let's go to Google first. Try Google Earth. You know what? No, I'm not gonna get Google Earth the download. I'm just going to go to get the um the one you go straight to it. There we go. That's better. Let's see where Serbia is in Europe. There you go. Well, Serbia. There you go. All right. Okay, this is Serbia. Which, let's see which country. That's Eastern Europe. Is that what that is? Yes. It's bordered by Bosnia and Herzegovina. Hmm. Montenegro. All right. Montenegro is mean uh, Mount Negro or the mouth of the black man. Uh, mouth of black. So, or, or we, as we studied before. All those countries, Romania, let's get rid of this, Romania, Bulgaria, Montenegro, Bosnia, all those countries, we were ruling those places during the, well, what they call the Dark Ages, when we had Esau as our serf, servant, okay, they weren't like that much of a bad slave that was during the Middle Ages, medieval time, we were ruling, and that's when we built all those castles over there, and these things happen over there because the land is being cleansed all right this is in serbia and for those of you who had remembered uh in 2020 okay let me see if i can still get this in 2020 we had hmm, okay, 2020 we had uh, a metal monolith Metal monolith in Romania. There you go. Okay. Ah man, this is Vox. Okay, so they will try they will try to explain it. I don't like Vox. Okay, remember those things? That one that was in Utah and this one was in Romania and the other one. Okay. Remember those things that pop up and people think like, oh, uh, the so-called Gentiles are putting those things out there to scare people. Um, uh, you're doing this because of movies and some guy doing that, of course. You know, they're trying to explain to you what had happened because they, they don't have any explanation for it. Okay. Now you do know those things that, excuse me. And reason right there. There you go. Now, this happened in Romania, of course. Those things was put there, believe it or not, by the Archangel Gabriel uh, to announce the judgment. We had a whole video about this, okay? For those of you who don't know, let me see if I can put the video there. If you wish to check it. <sighs> God, I hate that. You know, this computer is new. I have to, actually today is the first time I'm using this thing. Okay. All right. Oh boy, this video, it's, it's gonna be a while for me to find this. No, you know what? I can just type it. Uh, Mero, Big Levi, let me see if I can get Big Levi. Oops. Big Levi, Utah. Uh, monolith. We call them Menir because that's what they are. Ah, uh, boy. I want to 
not find it. They buried everything. They buried all my videos because my shadow, my my planet, <laughs> my um uh metal menier. My channel is my channel is buried. It's 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 banned. It's shadow banned. So uh, that's uh, the two purposes of the, uh, of the Menier and the Dolmen. That's a video a response uh, to Brother Big Judah that, that we did two years ago. You need to watch this. And uh, yeah, so they they buried everything. This video is so far so far behind. Okay, we had we had made we had made the uh, okay. We had made um, we had made a video response, but Shalom, the video that we made was two years ago. It's very far behind, and we can find it. We'll find it with patience, of course. We'll find it. We're almost there. Hmm. All those videos, beloved, we advise you to go watch them, okay? In your spare time. Watch them in your spare time, okay? We were talking about the Black George, you know. They can't enjoy the blessing anymore. The Deaf Angel were there. The Pope, when they killed the Haitian president. You know, super technology. Finding Plume. Uh, this sister right here. Uh... You know, we can use the ley line to fly our ancestor did before us. You know, like our ancestor did before us. Okay, this video where the dogs were eating those people, eating in India alive. Well, they were dead because of the plague. Alright. Hmm. Okay, the video of the bear. Things were... Things are still crazy. And those things are still happening right now. And people are not seeing it. People are not seeing it. They cannot and they don't know what's happening. They just confuse. Over here we are not. We are not confused. We know exactly what's going on. Alright then. Hmm, I think we're going a little bit too far. Or did they remove my video? They could. I think they did. They remove it. No. No. It should be right before I give the video response to Big Judah. It should be right there. It should be around here. Maybe I passed it. I was being too fast. Remember that letter to the Vatican? We sent the letter to the Vatican. They act like they don't receive anything. Uh, the black judge, the deaf angel, is indeed in the midst. Most likely they removed that video because I can't find it. Oh boy. But anyway, it should be here. Yep. They, I think they removed it. <laughs> I think they removed it because I can't find it. I can't find it. Okay. Remember that video of this dude? Okay. Uh, that went to the UN. Okay. So maybe three. The guy that put the shotgun in his head. He said he will blow up his head if they don't take. If they don't take um the. Uh, the letter from him those are all warnings but you people didn't listen to that man you people didn't care anyway i can't find this video i can't find it uh utah uh let me see big levi the the significance significance of the utah 
monolith. There we go. Is that what that is? The prophetic meaning. There we go. All right. The prophetic meaning of the Utah monolith according to scriptures. Okay. It was, it's all in scriptures. Okay. Now, it's in, um, uh, I believe in the book of, not quite Chapter sure. 8, verse 1. In the, in the third year of the reign of the king Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto me, Daniel. After that, which appeared unto me as the first. And I saw in a vision. And it came. Okay, Daniel saw this. The whole thing is in there for those of you that want the video, okay? Uh, the prophetic meaning of the Utah monolith, according to scriptures, you can search for it, okay? That was two years ago, 7,000 view. And the same thing happened over there in Romania. This is us just to make a point. Is that thing recording? Yes, it is. This is just us making a point. And it was in Romania and all those other places are under judgment. Why we had to go to this length and show those things to you? Why? Because of this next video right here. Just one day after a deadly school shooting, Serbia has been rocked by yet another gun massacre. At least eight have been killed and 13 injured in the town of Milanovic. That's 30 miles south of Belgrade. Police tell Serbian media that a man opened fire with an automatic weapon from a car. Broadcaster RTS reporting this morning that a suspect is in custody. Like yesterday's shooting that killed nine, this latest massacre happened after a conflict at a public school. But the suspect in this case is an adult man, and police say it was a terrorist act. And while rare, mass shootings are not unheard of in the Balkan European country. Back in 2016, five people were killed in a rampage in a small village. And in 2013, 14 people died in a gun massacre in another town close to the capital. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. There you go. Now, beloved, all right, so that's what it is, okay? Prayers from, for Serbia from Romania, okay? Serbia and Romania is pretty much the same thing, the same area, okay? And this thing landed in Romania, okay? It's covered the, the whole thing. Remember, Romania was where Vlad was, Vlad, a.k.a. Dracula, the black man, all right? For those of you who did not know or do not know, Dracula was a black Hebrew Israelite man. He was keeping the Gentiles from invading our land over there in Europe. And he was killing them and impelling them and do all sort of horrible things to them so they would not come. He was the last man standing in Europe, okay? So, yeah, another MS happened over there in Serbia, okay? This guy took out eight people remember the one in texas i believe is another eight the number eight and uh that guy remember a year ago uh let me see if I can. is it this one is it what that is let me see uh mass ms massage palo uh buckhead Remember this dude, you know, he two years ago, eight people dead after shooting at Atlanta area massage parlor. It's been happening for a while now. And people don't see this. People don't, don't, they really, they see it, but they're like, huh, that's just like one thing. Okay. And we had videos. We explained to them the number eight is the new beginning. And as you can see here, is that the one? As you can see here, eight people or no more in Serbia. Eight people or no more two years ago. Eight, 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 eight. New beginning, new beginning. It's a new thing. Eight, nine, eight, nine. Uh, I believe eight in Texas. It could be nine. Some they say it was seven. Then become eight. Then it become nine. I'm not quite sure. I haven't watched it. Uh, I saw in Al Jazeera where this dude get out of the car the moment he got out of the car and he started blasting people. Okay? So... Yeah. All right. Let's keep on moving, beloved. Green to be interviewed. All right. Two roommates survived the stabbing attack inside this house last November. They left four other students dead. Bethany Funk was one of the survivors. And now she's agreeing to be interviewed by the defense in the murder case. 
Attorneys for the suspect Brian Koberger issuing a subpoena for Funk to testify. Koberger's legal team claiming Funk has exculpatory information that might help to exonerate him. An investigator for the defense writing, Ms. Funk's information is unique to her experiences and cannot be provided by another witness. Funk's attorney fought back, filing a motion to quash the subpoena, writing, even if Funk possesses exculpatory evidence, which remains unknown, there is no place or reason to present it at a preliminary hearing. But new court documents made public show she's now agreed to an interview with the Idaho-based defense counsel. Funk will testify in Reno, Nevada, where she's from. Instead of taking the stand in the Leyta County, Idaho court, where Koberger's preliminary hearing is set to begin in late June. Ahead of the hearing, the prosecution expanding its team as they look to bolster their case against Koberger. Two deputies from the Idaho Attorney General's office, Jeff Nye and Ingrid Bate, have been appointed to assist in the prosecution. Ryan, Ryan, is it doing? Koberger was arrested in late December, charged with the stabbing murders of Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, Maddie Mogan, and Kaylee Gonsalves. Now, many of you, if not all of you, you know this thing happened and this, it's been a year now. Is that what that is? It's been over a year. And those people still can't get any justice, no peace, okay? They don't know what happened. They don't know who did it. Uh, this dude, it seems he's going to get away with it. And um, they, they have no idea what's going on. Why is that? Why is it that suddenly the Gentiles or 83 can no longer get away with things? They can no longer literally say, oh, uh, well, you know, uh, a, a black guy was walking by. Remember, if these things like that happened in the 90s, it, this dude would have never, they would have never put their hand on him. They would have just found a random black dude that had some crazy mental uh, unbalanced medals, anything that is wrong with him, uh, that has a, a rap sheet of records, a bunch of felonies and convictions and stuff. They would have told the public, he did it. And then they would have said, oh, okay, yeah, all right, well, that's, it's normal. And... Those people, they are criminals, they are violent criminals, they are predators, so yeah, 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 they did this, okay, and they would have arrested, so, but now those things can't, can't be done anymore. Now this dude killed those four young kids, okay, those are young people, those are the future of their race, Bridget, okay, they are on their 30s, I'm assuming, college educated going to school try to do something nice those are not street halls and, and street negroes and doing things those are the best that have been taken out by their own the guy if he is guilty i have no idea he's a teacher is that what that is the, the fellow is, is that thing recording is that thing is, is it yeah yes yes, 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 yes. Now, the fellow he is uh, ambulance uh, that guy he's a uh, he, he's a teacher you got their best taking out of the best okay these things happen because those folks ancestors back then okay they lunch our bridging they hang them up on the trees they burn them okay those are the same women that came back reincarnated back then those are the ones that say he ripped me he look at me the funny way he said this to me and this dude were the one that run after our people and killed them the other guy that did this were the guys that hung our people now it returned upon your own head all right that's what it is let's keep on moving Good evening. Thanks for joining us this Saturday. I'm Christina Rendon. We begin tonight in Hayward, where four people were shot overnight, two of them killed outside what investigators are calling an illegally operating business. KTU's Dave Dentling spoke to sheriff's investigators and neighbors and joins us live from the newsroom with the latest. Dave. Hey there, Christine. Well, this business operating as a hookah lounge has been on the county's radar. Neighbors tell me they know it's a problematic site. Now it's being associated with this morning's deadly quadruple. Of course, this dude's name is Dave Detlin, Dave David, David, the house of David. Of course, we know who's over the house of David. So we just point things out because we do this all the time. Let's keep on moving. Shooting and people want it permanently shut down. 
Daylight hours revealing a widespread crime scene following an overnight shooting outside what the sheriff's office says was an illegally operating hookah lounge on Mission Boulevard. Four people were shot. Okay, four people were shot. Of course, the number four is the four quarters, the four element, fire, water, air, and earth, and the four archangels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, Uriel, okay, and the four element that hold everything, all right, four element of magic. If without any of them, without none of them, we, will, we would die, we would not exist, okay, now we can see, let me just enlarge this so the folks, <clears throat> We can see the number 54 years again, uh, with, which has a battle, which can consider as a cup, okay? And then another 153, we can be considered as a cup. The cup of dregs, 54, 5 plus 4, uh, equal 9, okay? The cup of dregs, judgment, 5 plus 3, equal 8. New beginning, the cup of uh, the sweet wine, the new refined wine, the new fresh wine the new wine that's what we're going to drink for the new beginning okay i'm not making this up this is what it is this is what we get all right then let's keep on moving two of them are dead never this close mario rivas lives near the business like his neighbors the shootout has him concerned surprising i mean you never want to hear that that kind of stuff is going on so close to home um but it just seems a sign of the times you know no matter where you live no matter where you go um, situations like this could break out. And he is right. He is right, man. You know, he is right. No matter where you are, where you go, and this thing will happen. What he's saying, he he's reiterated on the fact that back then, the news made it their duty to make it sure that every single time someone is watching the news, everything bad that happened always happened in the hood. It's always something happened in the hood. Every single violent crime is either in the hood or our people being doing it. It is always like that. And what they've seen now, it, it what the news been reporting onto them is actually false. This thing is happening literally everywhere, anywhere. So that's why they are quite concerned now, okay? According to the Alameda County Sheriff's Office, it all started with some type of altercation outside the business around 1.30 a.m. Two entities showed up here, some type of altercation ensued, and there was a shootout between the two. Officials and neighbors tell KTVU the location where this all went down is known for being a nuisance property. Like 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, I always see the Alameda County Sheriff, and I'm like, what are they doing right now? Then again, whenever things like that happen, have our people come over there and explain this mess. Okay, explain it. They weren't there. They have no idea what's going on. This sort of thing. Have them go over there and explain it. Not giving them that, 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 an opinion. Have them explain it to give the public and somewhat uh, the idea that they're involved with it. Even if they are not involved. But look at those people over there. They're always in the area where crime is committed because they're the ones that bring the crime with them. That's the type of things messages they are passing on okay right there they don't have proper permit of course you have one of our sister over there or you know just explain everything to operate as a business huh and it means more deaths fines now new code violations are plastered on the building as code enforcement once again tries to shut the business down as for the crime scene and its 50 plus evidence markers, neighbors say any amount of gunfire is too much. I'm really sad about the two people that lost their lives and that is so close to my home. I have three kids, so I'm a little scared, but then I know I stay in my lane. And we did reach out to the listed building's owners, but did not hear back. Police have not yet released the names of those killed. As for the surviving victims, the extent of their injuries are unknown. Okay, so this is San Francisco. Let, let me see what's going on over there. There's a lot of things going on around the world, a lot of shootings. Uh, what happened over there in San Francisco? Oakland teacher moves strike. Uh, selling. Student reacts to Oakland teacher strike. Okay, that's the thing in Texas. Everybody's talking about it. Uh, Berkeley professor apologizes for false indigenous identity. Is that what that is? Did she try to swagger jack our stuff? Hmm, let me see. What is it? 
Dix, an anthropology professor at UC Berkeley, is apologizing for not telling the truth about her ethnicity. Elizabeth Hoover's identity as Native American had been questioned for years. She issued an apology this week for falsely identifying as indigenous, saying she is a white person who lived in identity based on family lore. Hoover <laughs> has been facing pressure to resign since last year. Oh, That's boy. when she first acknowledged she had never confirmed her indigenous roots, but had benefited from programs and funding yes, yes. for Native American scholars. Yes, yes, yes. That's what those people do. That's what they do. You know, they just swagger jack uh, uh, identities and going around and claiming they are everybody and reap the reward. And then once everything dried up, they're like, oh, well, you know, once you question them, it's okay, do you have any proof of you being, you know, like us? Um, <clears throat> uh, I mean, what kind of proof do you want? Well, proof, papers. Can you prove anything? No. You know what? I'm sorry about that. I apologize. And then they still keep on reaping the reward. Okay, it's crazy. But anyway, uh, the mighty one want us to see this. Let's keep on moving to the next videos. Station in Southwest Houston, detectives say the man was shot multiple times after punching the suspect in the face. The police say another man connected to the case was also shot at a nearby apartment complex. Our Brittany Jeffers is joining us live near Bissonette and Leah Wood to explain what happened. Brittany. Yeah, a, a lot of details in this particular case. Detectives say they're still trying to work out exactly what happened, but they've been on the scene for about five hours now. If you look behind me, you can see the crime scene tape set up around this Valero gas station, and it was around midnight when police say a red vehicle with a man and a woman inside pulled up into the parking lot. Now, detectives say a woman got out of that car, and at the same time, a man who is a victim in this Okay, so it seems a lot of things been going on at gas station lately. But anyway, uh, let me see. Is that what that is? Is that what that is? That this number over there and this truck right there. Is that what that is? It's it's everywhere, man. All right, it's 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 everywhere. You know the number ten right here. Well, you know who's in the miss? One, two, three. Uh, for those people that uh, study with us, one plus three. Uh, you know what that is, uh, the um, 1 plus 3, <laughs> 1 plus 2 equal 3, the physical, astral, mental body, okay, all right, the triangle, all right, 3 plus 4, 7, perfection, again, uh, the number th 7, 73, again, th 7 plus 3, 10, Michael, and the miss, okay, 2 plus 8, 10, uh, uh, 10, 10 plus 9, 19, 9 plus 1, 10, again, Michael, and the miss. 3 plus 9, 12, Michael, and the miss, on the behalf of the 12 tribes. Okay, is that 6? 6 plus 4, plus 1, plus 1, 6 plus 4, 10, plus 1, 11, plus 1, 12, 12 tribe, 12 tribe, Michael, uh, Michael, Michael, over the 12 tribes. It's all over. You can't deny that. Some of the thing I just don't really need to go into it because it's just overwhelmed. The information is all over. It's all written. If you add all of this, it's all over, okay? All right, then let's keep on moving, Bridget. Got out of that car, and at the same time, a man who is a victim in this case came out of the convenience store. They say he walked up to the red vehicle and then punched the driver in the face. The driver then pulled out a gun, according to police, and started shooting, firing multiple times, killing that man. The driver of the red vehicle, however, police say, took off, leaving the female passenger in the parking lot. Shortly after that, a third man, who police believe is a friend of the victim, walked up to the woman and started punching her multiple times and then took off running. The red car, our suspect, our shooter, pulls back into the parking lot, picks up the female, and we see him leaving the video and go down the road. And we believe he, we believe he most likely tracked down the guy that was punching the female and there was a shooting over there. And again, that hasn't been confirmed, but we're working on that because he's at a local hospital right now. Crazy, crazy. It's everywhere, all right? Let's keep on moving, beloved. Let's keep on moving. Up. Following breaking news, the medical examiner's office has identified the off-duty officer killed last night on the south side. 
She is 24-year-old Arena Preston. WGN's Judy Wang has more. A police procession. <laughs> officers escorted the officers. Again, uh, the other one was number 73, and this one right here is number 37. You know what's going on. You know who's in the midst. Let's keep on moving. Body from the University of Chicago Hospital to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. She joined CPD just three years ago. We ask that you keep mm -hmm. the officer and her family in, in, in your prayers. She's still there? I thought she, well, she's not re-elected. Is that, is that thing is done? I don't know how that politic things work. You know, I thought that they had some kind of like picture or some kind of mascot dressing at her, as her. I, 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 I don't know. Is, is that what that is? is? Is it because, I don't know, she, good grief. Anyway, let's keep on moving. As well as the men and women of Chicago Police Department who sacrifice everything, including their lives, on the line for the city every day. The Calumet District officer was on her way home after finishing her shift. Police responded to a report of shots fired in Avalon Park at about 1.40 a.m. We got a person shot. It's an off-duty PO. It was coming from the front side of the house, nine rounds. A responding officer found the wounded officer in the front yard of a home at 81st and South Blackstone Avenue. 81 Blackstone. You can't make this up, man. Okay, 81 A plus 1. You know what to do. Well, the word Blackstone, of course, we know uh, Shabbatai, the Black George, you know, they call the planet, the highest planet, the heaviest planet, and then lead, and they're uh, crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's keep on moving. The officer put her in the back of a squad car and headed for UFC, where she died of her injuries. I've directed the superintendent to spare no expense to make sure that we find the people responsible for this and bring them to justice. Of course, that's cold comfort to a family you see leaving. again beloved these type of things they will take a toll on you all right you can see this woman she's not faking none of those things she is visibly shaking okay and with the whole squad of 83 behind her okay the whole uh, um and the, those are not our people those are samaritan people that look like us and they put them in front of us so we can say, so we can okay, well, she's black like you, so you should listen to her and do whatever the hell she said. But that's not what that is, okay? All right, that's not what that is. And and the the thing is, like, it, it's pretty much it's all over here, man. It, it, when you look at this, the clues are all over. It, let me enlarge this. There we go. It's all over. All right. Three plus two, five plus five, ten. Michael in the miss. All right. Seven, seven plus two here, nine. The judgment, all right? And and then you can see this woman, the, her face, her eyebrow. This is not a healthy person, man. I don't want to be in her place, man. No matter what, whatever money that they are giving, you can you don't sleep at night, man. You can't sleep well. Like anytime you're going to sleep, they call you chief or mayor. You got to be here. Another cop being shot. This person being shot, doing this. For what, man? <laughs> for what <clears throat> for a few bucks or for you would not enjoy whatever they are giving you money fame this this is crazy man i, I don't even want to watch the rest this is traumatizing right here now while all those things are happening what is what seems to be the issue why, why is it like every single time you turn on the news it is always some kind of calamity or some kind of cataclysm some some horrible things happening and you, you always see 83 is in the midst of it okay they'll do their best to put our faces in front of but eventually it's happening to them now it's happening because of genesis 15 verse 13 and he said unto Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and they shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Yes, indeed. 16, 19, 20, 19, 16, 20, 20, 20, 16, 17, 20, 17, 16, 18, 20, 18, whenever you want to put it, the 400 years is over. That is why now we are in Genesis 15, verse 14, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. Okay, the judgment is here. Who is bringing the judgment? 
planet Saturn and Pluto. What's going on? Saturn, aka Shabbatai, the Hebrew name for the planet, leave his house or its house, which is Capricorn, and then it moved to the house of Pisces. Why? Because the age of Pisces is over. So the judge moved to the age of Pisces to judge what had happened in the age of Pisces. And all those horrible and terrible things happened to us in the age of Pisces. And Aquarius is the age that we are in now officially. We enter that age this January the 21st that passed there. And Pluto had entered Aquarius. What is Pluto? Pluto, for a lack of a better term, is the base of Lucifer, so to speak. Pluto is the ba Pluto is literally hell. Pluto is planet hell. And Pluto is here in Aquarius, okay? And that's why things are going through hell. Things are very fast, rapidly, with an astonishing speed. All those things are happening so fast that you, by, well, by the time this video publishing, whatever time you are watching it, there'll be so much things. There'll be probably another MS happen by the time you're watching this. That is because Pluto is the quote unquote hell. Pluto is the jail. Pluto is the prison. Okay. Shabbatai, Saturn, is the courthouse, okay, the house of the black judge, and it is judges, and then now a lot of people are being sent into hell, to prison, to jail, and to the cemetery, all right? So, and they are bringing uh, the, the angels, of course, the, the intelligences, all right, they are bringing the ten plagues of the apocalypse of Abraham, what you just witnessed here, mostly, is number five, destructions by the sword. And of course, number nine, again, execution by the sword, okay, and flight and distress and all that. All right, so it's pretty much, it's pretty much all over, okay, it's pretty much all over for the so-called 83, all right, let's keep on moving. God, this, this is depressing. There we go. Now, I would Elephant not... Shooting at an outlet mall in Allen, Texas, just north of Plano. The Collin County Sheriff tells our sister station, WFAA, this is a deadly shooting and there are multiple victims, including children. The sheriff also reported that the shooter is dead at the scene. Now, according to reports, gunfire erupted at Allen Premium Outlets right. at around 3.30 this afternoon. So, um, well, you know, Fat Burger, you know, 82. Uh, now, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to bring that in there because of the graphic things that are in there. Okay. All right. But. Oh, um, because of the situation, because of the situation, we, we're going to speak a little bit about it okay all right we're going to speak a little bit about it all right tonight a growing memorial in allen texas as we learn more about the gunman who killed eight people at an outlet mall a law enforcement official telling the associated press that federal investigators are looking at whether he had some white supremacist views ken melestina has the latest from allen tonight on Sunday, mourners built a makeshift memorial for the victims at the Allen Premium Outlets. The day before, a gunman pulled up in a sedan and began shooting at people, killing eight and wounding several more. Multiple sources telling CBS News Texas the gunman has been identified as Mauricio Garcia and that he had no serious criminal record. An Allen police officer who happened to be nearby killed the shooter moments into the deadly rampage. Police say likely saving lives. Authorities did not immediately provide details about the victims as local and federal authorities investigate. We know you are grieving. We are grieving. Rest assured, the nation and the world are also grieving. Stephen Spainhauer, whose son works at the mall, says he got to the scene before first responders and tried to save people. Yeah. I wanted to do something to save a life if I could. and. I wished I could have, but I couldn't. Hmm. Shoppers there at the time of the massacre recalled hiding at various locations as the mall ordered everyone to shelter in place. Hmm. It, it was scary. I mean, anybody would be scared when they hear gunshots and they just don't know what's going on. About hmm. two miles from the mall, a church held a Sunday evening vigil to mourn the victims. 
Ken Molestina, CBS News. So again, uh, not much information, okay, he, Mauricio Garcia, okay, which is the word Maurice, let's see what does the word Maurice mean, hmm, What the oops What does the name Maurice means? Dark skinned. Hmm. According to Shinos, in English baby names the meaning of the name Maurice is dark skinned, a more. Alright, so Mauricio, okay, Maurice, dark skinned, Garcia, and uh, went over there and did this, you know? <laughs> a more dark skin. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible, incredible. Okay. All right. I was not aware that Mauricio mean dark skin. I forgot. We went into Garcia before. Uh, okay. Um, the name Garcia mean brave in a bottle. Okay. Dark skin, brave in a bottle. Docs mean <laughs> brave in bottle. You can't make this up again Mauricio is, is another it's the Spanish version of Maurice which mean dark skin and Garcia mean brave and bottle dark skin brave and bottle so I, I didn't say it I didn't say anything so the mighty one is doing this taking revenge through those people that don't look like us, but performing things that we should have been performing out there, but hey, they are doing it, and then they are taking the blame. What what they are doing here, beloved, they are trying their best to put this thing on us, to put all those MS on us, you know, but hey, through the codes, through the codex, we are decoding, you know, how the mighty one is judging those people, and that's what it is, man, dark skin, brave and battle you can't make this up and those church people they are the one that cause all those things because they lie to the world they blinded the world and people don't know how to act they don't know what's going on they are very confused they brought great confusion in the midst of the people so they are going around and killing a bunch of people because the church excuse me mainly the catholic church the priesthood of mahan himself they had messed up the record. They lied to everyone and they caused all those things. So now, excuse me, they are in the church singing and, and pretending everything is even, everything is somewhat better or back to normal. It is not. At a federal court in D.C., this is about the insurrection at the Capitol. The longest sentence handed down in a Capitol riots case to date. Moments ago, Peter Schwartz, a Pennsylvania man, was ordered to serve 170 months in prison. That's 14 years and two months. Schwartz was convicted of repeatedly assaulting police with pepper spray during the attack on the Capitol. So what is it that makes his case stand out above the others? Well, Schwartz had 38 prior convictions on his record. Prosecutors describe Schwartz as one of the most violent and aggressive participants. Before today, the longest sentence handed down for the insurrection was 10 years. Okay, so imagine this dude, he probably in his 50s, and you're going to spend 14 years in prison, you know, for, I don't know, man, some dude, you vote for some dude that lost, and, and, you know, some guy you never met, you don't know this guy, he he has no interest in you, and things like that happen, you throw your life away, but yeah, that guy been throwing his life away for 38 years, so, things like that happen, and you're done, man, you know, you're done, hey, that's what happened, 283, let's keep on moving. And now to a safety alert, an 18 year old from Taravella High School has been arrested after she allegedly made threats about a school shooting. And the police say she made the threats using another student's name and computer access before it was published on social media. Local 10's Joseph Ojo is live in Coral Springs with the details. 
Good morning, guys. And although the punishment is serious, we do, it does seem like we keep seeing these school threats over and over. This time, it was an 18 year, old, 18 year old girl here at Taravella High School, and now she is faced with some serious felony charges. An arrest made after this graphic threat, which circulated online and among students and staff of Broward schools on Thursday. 18 year old Cartina Petit, a student at Taravella High School in Coral Springs, now likely to face multiple felony charges. Students on Friday reacting to the news. I don't know why people do that for amusement, but it's something like, it's, it's not a joke, it's something serious. Coral Springs Again, Saint, Petit posted the threat using another student's name and computer access. Again, anytime, Things like that happen. They never show who did this, but they always show the person that give an opinion or trying to explain. It is always someone look like us. Every single news clip, as if we all, not only they are showing this, as if we all the one doing this. And when you ask those people, damn, black folks is we pretty much everywhere. We are how, how, how much? How many of us now? Oh, you thirteen percent of the population. 13 percent yes since the you know 1860s till now you 13 percent so 13 percent of this population okay and every single time something happened in the news you never show the face of the person she's 18 she's a woman she's not a teen or a, a, a young girl she's a woman you know her face should have been plastered all over Yet, you show some dude that kind of look like us. Okay? Alright? So, she wrote this, okay? Mark this day, May 5th, 2023. I will shoot up the school and kill every student here. Tomorrow morning, Friday at 7.40, as soon as the bell rings. But, who knows, I may do it during the day or after the school day and between classes all know all, all i know is everyone must die spread the message it would be a shame if you let kids roam the halls while i secretly shoot them to death to, to their death oh wow. great grammar skills right there uh wouldn't it let's see and find out mark the day friday uh january may 5th 2023 I will make history as the top school slaughter. You can capture me, but it won't only be me. It will be other kids and other classroom helping me out with this memorable slaughter. But I won't tell you their names. Who knows there may be also a bomb in the school right now. I guess we'll wait and find out. Okay? Alright? So, people do this. Uh, they they do that because it's cool to do that. It's cool, you know. Hey man, I got arrested, man. My, you know, I threat the school. I'm gangster, you know. And now they are taking this thing very seriously. People are getting years of prison for this. Okay, <laughs> federal charges. They can give you ten, five, ten years for that. <laughs> this is no joke, man. Crazy. But anyway, let's keep on moving. You, sir, are here on one count of a murder in the first degree, premeditated. That is a felony, uh, class one felony. Tonight, Fox 10 exclusive video as police arrest the man that they say killed a gas station employee in a particularly heinous manner in Glendale. 20-year-old Mohammed Hussein Ati just making his initial appearance before a judge on first-degree murder charges. Police say he targeted Irma Rivera Martinez, shooting her at least 10 times. Fox 10's Lauren Clark joins us live now in Avondale. Lauren, you spoke to the suspect's mom? Yeah, that's right, John and Christina. It was a very brief encounter opening the door. She just started sobbing and did not want to talk with us any further. And it was around this time last night when police arrested Atai near this neighborhood in a home that he lives in with his parents. But right now, Irma's family still says they have more questions than they have answers. Exclusive video shows the moment leading up to the arrest. About a dozen SWAT members gather outside the house as neighbors, too afraid to speak to cameras, say they heard police tell someone to come out with their hands up. Hours later in Glendale. We are here to announce an arrest in the murder of Irma Rivera Martinez. Glendale police sharing the news. 
This was a heinous, vicious murder. With detectives saying this man, 20-year-old Muhammad Hussein Atayi, was responsible for the brutal attack. We do believe it was specifically targeted. Newly released surveillance video shows a hooded figure entering the Chevron off 51st Avenue and Glendale Avenue. Anytime you are anywhere, any person dressing like this, wandering around like that, you know, try to do this, you know, do that, be on the be on a high alert, you know, because those guys, oh boy, up to no good. Remember, they were making fun of certain people, putting some skittles around them, taking pictures and mocking our people. Look what happened now. Friday. Police say the attack was quick and brutal, with the suspect ignoring another employee inside and shooting Irma at least 10 times at close range. Around a minute later, the person is seen running out of the store. Police say surveillance video helped connect them to Atayi's car and while serving a search warrant, also found evidence like the distinctive shoes spotted on camera. Irma's cousin Angel says her family is relieved. Now that they're caught, we are just left with so many questions about why he did it, what the motive was. We, nobody knows who this person is, so we, we don't even think she would have known who he was, so why, why target her? As detectives are still trying to piece together a motive, her loved ones say they're looking forward to justice. You should have seen that somebody so young and so close to age as him should have had so much more to live, so if he wanted to send it away for... Well, we don't know the motive of that. Um... They never really say anything. A uh, man identified after being found dead with trauma on his body. Uh, he's still in Phoenix. Um, crash. Uh, Texas MS. Um, fire one way crash. A 99. Two dead. I don't even do the ley lines anymore. Just so much. Okay. All right, where is it? Where is this thing? I'm trying to look for an update. What happened? Why this dude did this? Did he know them? He didn't know her. Okay. Okay, men accused of killing gas station. Okay, that's it. There is no... Okay. I don't think they have anything yet. I would like to know what happened. Did this dude know her? Because it seems very personal. It seems it's very personal. Shoot her ten times. Okay, that's the dude that did that thing over there in Texas. Okay. Uh, let's watch this one. Okay. News alert, we're starting to learn more now about one of the most intense manhunts in recent Texas history, the capture of a gunman who police say killed five people in his next door neighbor's house. The hunt for 38-year-old Francisco Oropeza began Friday after he fled the scene uh, from the town of Houston, Texas, which is a little town 40 miles, or Cleveland rather, which is a little now, one, one thing must remain clear about Texas, okay? Uh, I believe a sister sent me a video. Let me see if I can get it and explain something here. Why Texas is catching so much hell. All right, so I believe that... All right, it is, it is, good. Shalom. Alan Moore MS. I was not there at the incident, but earlier... In the morning, of course, from the mall area at the Whole Foods, got an alert from neighbors Ab that evening. Frisco Mall shooting. I live in Frisco and do not frequent the mall anymore, but that happened too. 
Last year, someone bought how many birds tend to migrate around areas as a sign of the Mosai in this situation. That more was built over lanes belonging to our people way back when I believe. I just happened to capture a bunch of, of birds flying over the moor months prior to your community post in December 2021. I've been waiting for something to happen there. It, it has pending karma, okay? All right, that's what it is. I'm not going to play the video, but the sister sent this uh, thing unto us. Remember the, the, the crows, birds, okay? That was uh, at Texas, uh, Texas Mall. <sighs> Oops. Huh? Okay. To search by voice, go to your browser setting and allow access to microphone. Ah, boy. I don't have time to do this. Flock of Raven in Texas. More. Okay. Uh boy. I think it's this one. Okay, the birds. Remember all people are seeing um okay. Bird swan parking lot in Texas. Swan the more. Hopefully this doesn't have any news, any uh, things in it. All right, I don't want to play it, but that's what happened. Okay, uh, remember four years ago, voice in the sky, Brian, Texas. Okay, uh, all right, remember this two years ago. All windblown and wet. Yeah, hold on a second. <coughs> okay, that was in, in May, May 27. I forgot what year, two years, three years ago, and then now we're in May. Is it pretty loud over the phone? Shelly, wait till it screams. Let's go to the beginning. We watch this all the time when things Listen happen. To this. There's a sound screaming. Like a, it's like a It's like a scream. It's so freaking loud and it's coming from up in the air like up there. It's been going on now. What is that? Those were a warning. That's what it were. I swear I saw like this thing when the lightning was flashing a second ago. What the fuck? Yeah. Dude, that's coming from like up in the sky outside of my apartment. Yes, and and the so-called authorities or scientists, they had no explanation f for this. They couldn't explain it. And we told them that's judgment coming. What you had what you heard from this uh this noise that what happening in the sky was the noise of those people that are paying for what their ancestors have done and they are literally in hell those are the people literally in hell okay so this thing is scary Gene, check this out. Okay. Listen, this is coming See, from the sky. Of this cannot be the voice of a of a regular human crying miles away. <laughs> you hear this thing miles away, man. All right. Above my apartment. It's been going on for half an hour. Hold on. It's 
come from up in the air. What is that? That's so scary. It sounds like someone's screaming. Then it sounds like a bunch of like Indians whooping in the distance. Okay. It sounds like a bunch of Indians whooping in the distance. Hey, that's what it is, man. And ever since then, we told those people things are going to happen in Texas nonstop. And it did. I mean, ever since we had that winter accident in Texas in 2020 or 2021, the whole highway pile up and all things, people die frozen to death because the power grid fell and all this stuff and people never listen, okay? Crazy. What is that? And it's been like half an hour ever since the lightning and thunder started. Shelly, wait till it screams. Woo! So this is just a reminder for the people to know what had happened in Texas. All those things were warnings. That's why you see all this nonsense going on in Texas. That's this dude, you know, took out five people, and then a week later, barely a week later, another dude taking eight. All right, all right, let's keep on Town watching. North of Houston, he'd been asked to stop firing his gun because a baby in that other home was trying to sleep. Well, in the rampage, the baby's mother and nine year old brother were among the five killed. The sheriff there confirming that Oro Peza was arrested without incident about 20 miles from where the killings happened. And now we've learned the alleged killer's wife has been taken into custody. Diva Maria Nava, who was in her 50s, apparently had denied knowledge of his whereabouts, but now uh, investigators think she's the one who hit him in the home where he got arrested yesterday. He apparently thought hiding in a pile of laundry in her house would work, but it didn't. Bottom line is, we now have this man in custody. He was caught hiding in a closet underneath some laundry. They, were, they effectively made the arrest. He is uninjured and he is currently being taken to my facility in Cold Springs. Everybody played a very, very integral part in the arrest and capture of this coward. All right, so, all right, let's go. Skip we're also over. learning other arrests have been made, although they're not yet giving an exact number or what these other arrests are for. Oro Peza is a Mexican national who had been deported four different times, according to ICE. He was deported in March of 2009, somehow got back into the country, and then was deported in September of that same year, but he managed to keep getting back into the U.S., deported again in 2012, and deported again in 2016, but each time was able to get back into the U.S. All right, so this is the thing right now. You see when those guys do those horrible crime and you know the most logical thing to do is just to get rid of them right then and there because they did the crime but no they excuse me they are going to drag their feet they are going to take spend as much time as possible and keep this ball rolling you know and they're not going to punish this dude and give him what he deserves Life in prison is not, it's not what somebody that did something like that. It would take five lives, you know, just took five people out. But anyway, uh, they're going to do the best they're going to do not to charge this guy. Well, if you can see here, 63 here, 63 here, 63 here, 10 is here, all over. Let's keep on moving. 
On to our top story at 6 o'clock, a triple shooting at a 7-Eleven in Dania Beach that investigators are now calling a double murder-suicide. And one of the victims is an 11-year-old boy who was simply buying ice cream when he was shot and killed. Let's get right to Local 10's Christina Vasquez live in Dania Beach with the very latest. Christina. And his teacher is telling us tonight that he was beloved and bright. This as we learn more from a witness about how he was brutally murdered and BSO telling us he was not the only shooting victim. The details are chilling. A fifth grader shot dead in cold blood by a man police say he didn't know while buying ice cream. It started just after 11 last night as Maximo Limas was working at the Laredo Taco Company inside the Stania Beach 7-Eleven. As 11-year-old Saeed Nabig Ali was buying ice cream with his brother and friends, Limas saw a man who police have now identified as 29-year-old Darren Rosenthal fire a shot at a man sitting in a van in the parking lot. He was just chilling in his car, minding his business. Then Lima said Rosenthal walked inside and shot and killed the boy before turning the gun on himself. He shot him in the head once and then on the floor he went bow pow again. Killing him, that adult male gunman then fatally shot himself. One of Saeed's teachers sharing with Local 10 News a statement his academy shared with the school community that read in part, he was a pleasant, well-mannered and bright boy. He loved to play chess and always got excited at the thought of playing soccer. At this time, the motive for this shooting is unknown. Detectives on this triple shooting case are working to understand what motivated the shooter. BSO tells us so far investigators believe the gunman and both victims, the man in his car in the parking lot who was rushed to an area hospital for treatment, and the 11-year-old who died did not know each other. This does appear to be a random act. Yep. The records show in 2014 and 2016, Rosen... So, yeah, it's a random act. This dude pull up Dania. For those of you who may not know, Dania Beach is sister city to Fort Lauderdale. And uh, Dania was the first city of Broward County, which where Fort Lauderdale is uh, located. Dania and Fort Lauderdale, they share Fort Lauderdale Airport, which is Dania and Fort Lauderdale Airport. All right. I used to love working in Dania when I had my business. Pretty cool area. Very small, very peaceful loving people i love the people over there i freaking love them they are very nice to me when i'm working over there and i always get good job over there I had nothing to say about dania that is bad but as you can see things like that happening in there all the time and it keeps happening okay that's not that's like in two days okay that's like in two days okay all right they they had uh let me check news let me check them. They had another thing in, in, in paper, in, in Dania. Let me see. Large blaze in Fort Lauderdale extinguished by fire. Men killed in Miami. Let me see. Uh, hmm. Okay. Okay, that's the family of the boy. Uh, hmm. Okay, that's the boy again. Okay. Three shot at gas station and Dania. There was another standoff and Dania. Hmm. There we go. Uh, arrest robbery suspect and Dania. Let me watch this again. I think police in Dania Beach have finally coaxed out a person who barricaded himself in a home. Let's get straight over to Local 10's Rosh Lowe. He joins us live from Dania Beach with the very latest. Rosh. This was a very active scene for a number of hours as a man barricaded himself in a house here in Dania Beach. I'll step out of the way so you can get a live look at the scene that has just broken down after several hours. Let's get right to the video and you can see the suspect surrendering, but not before SWAT came a calling. They were here, the SWAT team was here. We saw numerous uh, SWAT trucks, and finally that suspect comes out with his hands in the air, and Broward Sheriff's Office were able to put them in the back of a patrol car. Let me give you the story here as you continue to look at the resolution of this case. This began with reports of an occupied burglary. We're off of West Dania Beach Boulevard. Okay, a lot been going on in Dania, man. Again, it's everywhere, all right? 
Let's keep on moving. We'll get to Fort Lauderdale too. Let's keep on moving. A road rage incident in San Jose ended up leading police to a huge cache of weapons and ammunition, including semi-automatic rifles and a machine gun. And Makovic joins us live now with more on how this guy was caught. And yeah, Liz, the road rage incident happened almost a month ago, and a group of police cadets took it upon themselves to follow up until they tracked down the suspect. On April 13th, police say the man brandished a firearm at another driver near the intersection of Quimby Road and Remington Way in East San Jose. The suspect was identified but had taken off and might have gotten away. But a group of recruits from the department's field training program tracked down this man, 71-year-old Michael Myers. You can't make this up. The dude name is Michael Myers. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> the guy named is Michael Myers, man. You you just can't make this up, you know. Sometimes the Holy One has a great sense of humor, man. I mean, yo, <laughs> Michael Myers, you know. Oh, Michael Myers. According to Screen Rant, another weakness pointed out by viewers is Michael Myers' iconic mask, as every time he has been unmasked he stops killing, even though he had his victim in front and completely helpless. Some have even theorized that Michael's mask was made by Silver Shamrock, which explains why he's driven to kill when he hmm. wears it. Okay, that's Michael Myers, man. And, oh boy. I can't make this up, man. You know, Michael Myers is just... <laughs> oh, man. You almost got killed by Michael Myers. It said he didn't carry knives, though. Carry a bunch of guns. With the help of the training program's leaders, they got an arrest warrant and a search warrant for his home. And that is where they found all of this. 21 semi-automatic and bolt-action rifles, 16 handguns, one fully automatic submachine gun, two shotguns, and 10,000 rounds of ammunition. Then they got an emergency gun violence restraining order against Myers, and his weapons were seized. Now, obviously, this individual acted in a way that demonstrated he was no longer a responsible firearm owner, and in committing that crime of brandishing, has been served with a gun violence protection order, which removed all firearms from his presence and allowed us to seize them. Now, police say if you have any information on the road rage incident or anything else with this suspect, give them a call. This is crazy, but nonetheless, man, that's what's going on over there, man, you know? Crazy. Let's keep on moving, man. Beach, we're investigating an oh, okay, that's that. We just watched that. We have new details today after a deadly shooting at a Walmart in Lauderdale Lakes. Yesterday, we're now learning the man killed is a good Samaritan who was shot when he was trying to help a woman who worked at the store. Meanwhile, the suspect who police say is also an employee is now in custody, charged with first degree murder. Local 10 News reporter Syra Onward joins us live from the scene. And she has all of the latest on this investigation. And so this was somebody who just stepped in to help. Just, uh someone trying to help an employee who was uh, getting into an altercation with this man who had a gun. This was really a chaotic scene for shoppers, for employees, everyone here at this Lauderdale Lakes Walmart. And it's still pretty chaotic today. There's still a law enforcement presence outside. The staff here said they hope to reopen the store this morning, but that just didn't happen. 22-year-old Taroni Sterling of Lauder Hill behind bars accused of shooting a man inside a Lauderdale Lakes Walmart Tuesday afternoon. I was at the cash register and um, we heard some shots. Everybody just started running. I, I ran out of there. Walmart customers who dropped everything to escape the gunfire yesterday returning to the store this morning to collect their belongings. I left my book bag, but I, I had my wallet with me. Broward County deputies surrounding the store yesterday. BSO says so far their investigation shows shows Sterling arrived at the Walmart. He works there but was not on shift. Sterling and a female employee were arguing when things got physical. 
Deputies say Sterling dropped a gun on the floor and tried to steal the woman's cell phone. A male shopper tried to intervene. Sterling picked up the gun and shot the customer multiple times before running away. That customer was airlifted to Broward Health, where he later died from his injuries. After a few hours of searching, BSO SWAT and intervention teams tracked down Sterling near an apartment complex in Lauder Hill. Cell phone video appears to show them taking him into custody. He now faces first degree charges of murder and armed robbery by sudden and snatching. And you see how quickly they caught this fellow? How quickly they caught him and how quickly they going they charge him, you know, because that's what happened. Now, why did I bring this Bridget? Okay, this happened in Lauderdale Lakes again, which is sister city to Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale. So what had happened is I had to go to Walmart, and this is not my usual Walmart, but I like going to this Walmart because there is less people over there, and there are more stuff over here. The one that they have by my house is always packed, loaded, and a lot of people, you barely can find things, and too much people. So, when I was uh, going over there to this Walmart, specifically Lauderdale Lakes, and it was the day before that. And I slept on the bed. I was speaking with uh, our beloved sister Sophia over there in Canada. And I had to go to a Walmart and completed a transaction. And I was with my mother. I'm like, you know what? Let me go ahead tomorrow and do this. Is that thing recording? Because I would be very peace. If I spent two hours, uh, an hour and a half, uh, talking and that thing was, yeah, 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 yes, it is recording. So, and I'm like, you know what? Let me go to Walmart and do what I need to do and get things done. This specific Walmart in Lauderdale Lakes. And I'm like, ah, I don't want to go all the way up to Lauderdale Lakes, man. You know, I'll, I'll go to more. And something pop up in my mind say remember what you did uh, when you had the tbk to ship to the people remember that you if you did not ship 90 percent of it before the whole <laughs> excuse me the whole flood you would have been stuck home with the shipment the tbk and the pentacles okay see that is good just get off your butt go over there and go get that thing from Walmart, come back home because you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow. Remember, we all, in the last day, anything can happen. Just go over there, do what you need to do, do it now, do it today, don't wait, go ahead and go do it. And I listen to myself and I, my mother and I, we get in the car she needed to get a few stuff I uh, woke well, was early in the morning and we went over there uh, 9, 10 a.m. very peaceful, nice it felt so good it was nice out there I think it was March the 3rd and then I did the, the transaction there was no issue and I come back home I, come, I came back home probably an hour after so to speak and tomorrow this happened at the specific Walmart. Now, can you imagine, Bridget, if I did not hear the warning, if I did not hear the guardian angel, my guardian angel, talking to me and say, do it now. Okay? I would have gotten caught up in this, let, let's say, Lord forbid, I was going to be the hero that was trying to step in and help that young lady. Remember, this fellow... He worked at Walmart, okay? He had an issue with this employee, and then he went over there trying to, you know, talk to her, something happened, and the gun fell up, and he picked up the gun, the other dude stepped in. That's why we told our people, man, don't try to be a good Samaritan. There is no such thing as a good Samaritan. The Samaritan were horrible people. They were terrible, terrible, horrible people. They are not good don't get yourself involved when things like that happen even though you are a permit carrier you know if you are in a place 
that uh, give it excuse me uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna take some time for those dudes doing this thing out there ah oh, man can't close the, the window anyway uh, if there is anything like that happen brethren when you are in a place even you are carry protect yourself first the best thing to do if you have your family is to get your family out and go home don't try to be the hero and you know try to step in and those people are arguing it's uh, most likely it's not gonna end up too well okay so the the point of the lesson here brethren uh, i learned from this lesson if you have to do something do it now do it now don't wait do it now don't wait for tomorrow because you have no idea what what's gonna happen tomorrow okay all right let's keep on moving Beginning uh, this hour with some breaking news that is developing out of eastern Kern County. Four people are dead and deputies say the suspect involved has not been found. Let's take a live look right now at the crime scene in Mojave. The Sheriff's Department uh, responded to a call for a shooting on H Street in Mojave just before 1130 p.m. When they arrived, they found four people suffering from wounds of a, quote, obvious violent assault. Deputies said three people were dead at the scene. A fourth victim was taken to the hospital where they later died. KCSO says the victims are men and women. That's all the description we have at this hour. There is no suspect information at this time. If you know anything about this, call KCSO at 861-3110. As you can see, we do have a crew on scene. We'll get I believe they caught the guy that did this, right? Uh, let's look for it, though. Uh, I think I passed it, but anyway, uh, let's keep on moving. In the U.S., the troubled First Republic Bank is being acquired by J.P. Morgan Chase. Regulators had taken control of the bank, the third major institution in the U.S., to fail in two months. First Republic shares fell last week after it revealed customers had withdrawn $100 billion in deposits in March. That was the month Silicon Valley Bank and Signature Bank collapsed, causing fears of a wider market fallout. Let's join Kristen Salumi live for us now in New York. And Kristen, tell us a bit more about what led to this takeover. Well, U.S. regulators stepped in in the early morning hours and seized First Republic Bank and then turned around and immediately sold it to J.P. Morgan Chase. I'm standing outside of the headquarters here in Manhattan, New York. Uh, this was uh, after a weekend of intensive negotiations to try to prevent uh, another bank failure that would cause panic in the markets and distrust among investors. Uh, the government stepped in, did these negotiations, and Chase came to the rescue. First Republic, of course, had been teetering on the brinks of collapse ever since those other two banks collapsed in March. Uh, the issues for all three of the banks were similar. They relied on wealthy uh, deposits and wealthy depositors who were not protected by federal insurance if a bank were to collapse. Uh, the issue for them is rising interest rates. They had these uh, loans and investments that lost billions of dollars as a result of rising interest rates, and they just could not keep up. So again, this uh, quick action on the part of Chase Bank, which they're hoping will uh, prevent other banks from going down the same road. Uh, $30 billion had been invested in First Republic, but that was not 
enough to save it. So the good news today is that uh, people who have money in First Republic Bank will be able to go to those branches and access their money. Uh, those banks are now branches of Chase Bank. So that bank's been saved, Christian, but of course the big question is whether more banks are at risk and what it means for the broader economy. Right, absolutely. And Jamie Dimon, the CEO of Chase, took to Twitter today. Well, uh, to anyway, so what you can see and what you are seeing here is the financial system of 83. It's a uh, it's been collapsing for a long time now. It already collapsed, but they cannot keep the shenanigan anymore. And as we know, Pluto is already in the mist. Pluto has entered Aquarius, so the financial system, everything is being destroyed. What First Republic Bank, those on that. Uh, regular banks that you know you and I <laughs> assume yeah you know, we put our money in or we have hundreds or literally millions of dollars in there you know? so th those are the big dudes the big cats those are the elites they put there oh, that's what I'm assuming okay then that's what it is man and the mighty one is taking them down and there's nothing they can do about it it's just hey lie down there and take it Great glory. Um, more breaking news. A deadly discovery happened at a hotel in Fort Lauderdale. A person found dead and police are calling it suspicious. Local 10 News reporter Cyra Onward joins us live from the scene. And I know you have some details for us that, that you just have uh, learned. Tell us what's happening out there. That's right. Details details just came in a moment ago, Janice and Christy. Now, police are saying they don't suspect foul play in this death, but there was a lot of confusion out here this morning at this Fort Lauderdale hotel as we saw several officers outside of that unit. We then watched as they pulled a body out. Fort Lauderdale police officers and crime scene detectives outside a hotel room this morning. We were there as they entered with a stretcher and later removed one person's body from the room. Hotel guests say police arrived around 9 a.m. to this Ramada Hotel on State Road 84, just west of I-95 in Fort Lauderdale. All right. I spoke with a woman Oops. in the hotel room directly below the room where officers... I don't know why this thing keep doing this. Well, anyway, this hotel... <sighs> it seems... I got to be very careful with my words, especially with the things that I'm saying. And before I go into this hotel, beloved, the reason why you don't see us doing noon prayers anymore, it's because we have received a stand down. Everything that we had said, they are still valid. We're still good. We have a, a battery. Okay, we have a full charge battery. We just taking a break using our battery so and if you study with us you will know what that is um, we're still there it's not we're going it's not like we're not we, we are not going anywhere it's just we're making more time for us to study because we were asking for holy knowledge or holy wisdom and it has been given unto us so these type of things they will take time they will take you quite a, a lot of time for you to study it master it and use it so that is why you don't see us online. It's because the mighty one sent words, said, stand down. Everything that we've done our job, it is done. And everything we told those people, the plagues are here. The, the ten plagues of the apocalypse of Abraham is in the midst. It's all over. Whether they want to take it or not, it's the truth. So that's why you haven't seen us praying online anymore. Uh, and you may not see us ever do that. But we don't know. Now, with that being said, this hotel right here, funny, funny, funny business. Last year, around December 2022, December 24th, 2022, and something had happened. I'm just going to modify the story to protect the identity of the brother, okay? We had another, we had another incident not incident we had another case that we were working on with the brother that had problem with his mental health and stuff so 
we went and did something for him we sealed the stuff we keep that spirit away from him but we had to do it in a hotel and the same thing happened to another brother so to speak all right words went out and the brother called us to say man he he had a issue you help her, you help him you know can you help me and stuff so we went to this specific hotel brothers I'm not quite sure it was the specific room. I, I, I forgot all about that. But we went to the specific hotel right there, 84. State Road 84, of course, 4 plus 8, 12, that whole thing. And we performed the ceremony, ritual, or whatever you want to call it there. And the brother, ever since then, that was in December, though. Ever since then, December 2022, December 24th, 2022, ever since then, the brother's doing well. Everything's doing great. And then this happened. And now I'm thinking, I'm like, what? What's going on? Is it all the place that I visited or used to visit, things like that are happening, and at those places? I don't know. I don't know. It's just strange. Of course, I hear this thing happen over there. But anyway, we don't know what happened. It could be OD. It could be homicide. Officers removed the body. She says she was surprised to see the commotion outside. I didn't hear anything. All I saw was this morning the ambulance and all that. Two fire department trucks. And police all over, but I don't know why. She tells me she often saw the person who had been living in the room where the death occurred, coming and going from the hotel. But she and other guests I spoke to so far unaware of any death investigation. Yeah, Fort Lauderdale, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Let's keep on going. Well, major developments are in tonight in a murder investigation we've been following closely for you. Thanks for watching tonight. I'm Karen Lee. And I'm Michael Spencer. Last week, ah, Michael Alexa Spencer Martell was killed when a rock smashed through a window. She was driving on Indiana Street close to the Jefferson and Boulder County lines. Today, three high school seniors all arrested in connection with Bartell's death. Detectives say that they threw those rocks through car windshields, resulting in Bartell's death and two more people being hurt. We're staying on top of this developing story with team coverage tonight. Alan Janae goes in depth on how police tracked down those teens. We start, though, with Karen Morfitt live in Jefferson County. And Karen, you spoke to people who knew one of those teens and said problems started long before last week. And Michael, tonight all three of those teen suspects are behind bars here at the Jefferson County Jail. Some of the folks that we spoke with earlier today say they've had previous run-ins with at least one of these suspects. Others say their children go to school with them and that this week they were in class and had reportedly appeared to be acting as if nothing had happened. Joseph Koenig, Nicholas Korolchek, and Zachary Korolchek. So this is what they're considering teen. Look at look at Joseph Koenig, man. I mean that guy is a teen. Those are teen, man. I mean look at Joseph Head. Look at this dude. Ah, anyway, so I, I don't know. I can't pass this guy, man. I I I really can't pass that dude head, man. It seems like this dude, like when they come and get him, like oh, oh oh crap, I can't go to jail like this. He just quickly grab his mom wig and then glue it up on his head. I mean, you can literally you can see this is not something is not natural here. It <clears throat> it seems like something that's stuck in there. If you visualize the dude, you know, without no hair, it it look better. You're better. I don't know. This dude like, oh, hell no. I ain't, I ain't going to go to jail like this. He just grab a mop. He just pulled the mop out and then stuck the thing in his head and like, okay, I'm good to go now. This is a team. All right. Well, anyway, that, that's what it is. Let's, let's keep going with it. Then. Black teenagers now accused of throwing a rock at Alexa Bartel's car. Of course, the name Alexa, you know, we know Alex, who's in the mix, you know, young woman, all right, uh, she's 28, she got a whole life ahead of her, and they kill her, they murder her, and I believe they went back to take picture of the scene for memories, okay, crazy. Hmm. Killing her. Having it linked to somebody that is in your general neighborhood, in your school, it's heartbreaking. A neighbor who asked not to be identified told us she was not surprised to learn the boy down the street, Joseph Koenig, was involved. Unfortunately, it wasn't a shock um, when we found out that Joe was one of the 
people accused of this incident. Um, there had been discussions and concerns in the neighborhood for you know the thing is like really like symbolic about this they made this interview showing a shadow and then write it as a giant freaking rock so now we know where that kid or so to speak mr joseph Borning, get those rocks actions that he had taken in his past according to the jefferson county sheriff's office all three are high school seniors one at stanley lake another online and another at ralston valley they were arrested in their homes they were brought to the sheriff's office for questioning and then they were booked into our jail. On social media, students commented about being in class with Koenig, saying, quote, two days ago was like any other day. And Zachary Quack reportedly attended prom over the weekend, posting on his Instagram just before being arrested. Each of the three teens now charged with first-degree murder, extreme indifference. Because if it's indifference about what they're doing, and, um, and this one in, in relation to... Um, respect for human life hmm. yeah so they just murdered this young young lady you know, just kill her crazy things man so great glory great praise oh boy uh, it's 7 13 a.m is that what that is i gotta go ahead and take care of something and i will be back instantly